What's up, everybody? Trying to see here uh, from Just for Wrestling, the JFW podcast. And uh, it's a little late, but better late than never to get a show released, right? Uh, this is a live stream that we did uh, last week for the SCW uh, Rock and Wrestling show that they partnered up with Steam How Brewing on Mantino, Illinois to put on. So uh, we had a chance to kind of talk about the match card and everything. Uh, this show did occur this past Saturday. Uh, but we had a chance to kind of talk with uh, a couple wrestlers uh, as well as a uh, fan, uh, Nieser. So uh, this is a two-part episode. So we're going to release uh, this part now, and then the next part is going to be released in a couple of days. So uh, take an opportunity to sit here and listen to this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we didn't get a lot of uh, SCW wrestlers on this one. This was a little different than the normal roundtables we do. Uh, it was a different date, a different time, so we're going to make sure that we get it kind of set up and uh, more um, of the norm that uh, SCW uh, and JFW bring to you guys and roundtables. So, hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to see an SCW show, uh, we will keep you updated on the next one. I believe it's not until July. Uh, and if you haven't been to Steam Hall Brewing and Mantino, make sure you check them out. Well, uh, information for... Both SCW and Steam Hall will be on our website, and you can check that out on Facebook if you just search uh, J- JFW Podcast, Just Freaking Wrestling, whatever. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. So we're going to and dive into this part one now. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, enjoy my conversation uh, with some of the guys. It's time! It's time! It's JFW If you guys could tell me real quick about uh, how I sound, if everything's if I'm clear, you can hear me and all that stuff. I'd appreciate that. Uh, Conrad, is that you? Boy, do I wish it was Conrad. I will say though, um, I was listening to another uh, wrestling show, and actually, I, I mentioned this um, on one of the previous episodes of JFW. Uh, what the hell is that called? Like the Wrestling Power Hour or something with that Steve guy. Uh, he was sitting there bad mouthing Conrad, like you know, about his like plugs and his promos and all that shit. That his sponsorships he puts into his show, and I kept thinking like, like how do you bad mouth the guy? That's how he makes his money, you know. It's what's the big deal? I do the same thing. And I was listening to a show today uh, on my way home from work. Uh, I think it was uh, one of the eighty-three week episodes, and it seemed like every eight minutes he had like a four-minute long. Uh, sponsorship that he was plugging and i was like okay now i kind of get it so um that'll probably be the one and only thing i agree from uh what i hear on the power hour so um look at that people could change thanks niece sir i appreciate that guys uh we only got a few people here in uh the live stream which i was hoping to get a lot more especially more of the wrestlers who are going to be uh performing at the uh rock and wrestling show tomorrow uh so hopefully maybe they'll pop in uh they'll show up a little bit later like i said i i, I committed you know two hours to this podcast uh, to this podcast live stream and um i will do my best to uh fill that up with uh, as much uh fun and entertainment as possible uh, if we get some people more in here who want to call in and stuff, like I said, most of my live, well, all the live streams I've done for uh, SCW and for the JFW podcast, call-ins are welcome. You're welcome to, uh, you know, participate in this uh, uh, just as long as you have headphones on. Like I mentioned before several times, without headphones, it, it creates an echo on the other end of the line. And I don't want to have echoes in the show because I do edit these down and release them as regular podcasts. So. If you want to call in, you want to talk about what's going on at CW and all that stuff, feel free to do so. Just make sure you do have headphones on and everything when you make the call in. Because if I hear an echo, I'll hang up on you. Um, that's why I pray that if uh, I do hear from Sentinel, he doesn't put headphones on. So when that echo happens, I get justify hanging up on him rather than just being rude. I'm just, you know, committing to my own rules. So, uh, 
Yeah. So uh, just a quick question to those who are in here. Is everyone going to the SCW roundtable or the SCW Rock and Wrestling show tomorrow at Steam Hollow and Mantino? Just uh, real quick, just want to get an idea of who's going to be there, who's not going to be there. And if you're not going to be there, I would love to know why. Because uh, this is something I'm excited about. Uh, if you listen to the last uh, roundtable, uh, I did. Uh, Hunter even mentioned and gave me partial credit for trying to kind of help him putting this show together. Not so much booking stuff and, you know, making like deals and stuff, but, so, but just throwing the idea out there of like, this is a possibility. So I'm really excited for this to be happening. Uh, Nisa, I'm glad you're going to be there. That'll be awesome. Uh, Steve, uh, kind of disappointed you won't, but I get it. If you can't, I mean, I'm assuming maybe work, maybe you got other, uh, obligations you got to go to. It is a little bit weird because this episode or this show that they're putting on tomorrow is at three in the afternoon. So it's a little bit different of a show. Um, but if you haven't been to uh, Steam Hall Brewing in Mantino, it's an awesome venue. Uh, it has incredible craft beers. Uh, the owners are awesome. Fucking love them. Uh, I've actually had them on my other podcast before the uh, the brewery actually opened up. Uh, so they're very uh, they're very sociable people, easy along with, uh, and all their beers that they have are absolutely amazing. And I've I've never been a craft beer guy. Um, until I tried some of uh, Blaine's um, creations. So uh, great beer, awesome environment. Uh, I'm excited to have the wrestling show out there tomorrow and kind of check it out. And also the uh, the uh, hair band, the hair band cover band, the hair metal cover band uh, that's going to be performing uh, following that too. I'm really excited for. Uh, I've been booked at a different show. Well, that sounds like a lie. What, what, what show are you booked at? I'll call you on it. MK should be on here. Lord knows he don't have anything going on. You know, I I I wish I was able to go to the uh, the last SCW show. And I again, not a big fan of the fact that they're moving uh, the weekends that they're doing the shows on because the last three I had to work. Um, but I did catch the pay per view, uh, so I was able to see most of the show uh, live, and I missed the Adam Cage stuff. And when I finally got the pay-per-view to work because I'm not very tech savvy and I couldn't figure it out, but once I finally was able to figure it out and get the uh, stream running, uh, the first thing I see is uh, Cage laying on the ground and Bo Keast and uh, VJ Price are staying over. So I'm like, well, clearly he just got kicked out of uh, Bulletproof, but I didn't really see what happened. <laughs> That's horrible, man. That is horrible. Funny. But, horrible. but I would love to see if Adam Cage comes on because I'd love to talk to him. I'd love to talk to Bulletproof LLC because I have yet to have one Bulletproof member on my podcast. You know, I I, I do these live streams, you know, sporadically. I will admit, you know, I did agree to do them on a monthly basis. I haven't really committed to that obligation. But at the same time, I don't think JFW is really being promoted at these uh, SCW shows like I was also told I would be. So, you know. I'm bitter like that. So uh, you guys count me out here because uh, you guys have been to uh, the past couple SCW uh, live events and stuff. I haven't. Um, before we dive into what's going on tomorrow, is there anything from the last couple episodes or the last couple shows that happened that uh, maybe I need to know about that I've missed, you know, that, you know, you guys could share with me kind of like a, like a recap for me. Uh, you Feel free to call in to tell me about it if you guys want. Uh, because I didn't catch the one two months ago and I just kind of watched the pay-per-view sporadically while at work last month. So, um, I do know, uh, obviously, uh, JPH is the new heavyweight champion. I saw that Lee Payne is still current, uh, tag team champions. Um, I see that C red is still ta- managing, uh, elite pain, even though on the power hour, C red kind of destroyed, Mark Anthony, which doesn't make sense to me why a manager would do that, but hey, not my business. Uh, we can't believe pain sucks. There you go. Okay, well there we go. Steve, why does why does elite pain suck? I would love to know that. I would love to know your reason why you think they suck. Because I'm curious. Uh, who else is on here? Amy. Hi, Nisa. Uh, I believe that's Steve's daughter. These pictures are so small, they're annoying, but I assume, assume uh, little little lady Steve. But uh, 
Why so negative, Steve? Yes, Nisa wants to know the question. Actually, Nisa uh, messaged me uh, earlier today uh, because he was a little bothered that I called him soft on uh, on Adam Cage's uh, Facebook post. So that was an entertaining uh, conversation with uh, Nisa. So thank you for uh, that. Was a thing. I actually woke up to that because I, I worked nights last night and I didn't wake up until like this afternoon, really. So that's why I woke up to. I was like, perfect. The one thing I need is Nisa to uh, to ask me why I was calling him soft. I mean, it was pretty obvious, Nisa. I mean, you sat there and you talked about how you wanted to fight Adam Cage in the ring, you know, next year. And now your buddy buddies with him, man. You can't be doing that. You can't you can't sway just because somebody's not part of bulletproof anymore. That's like that's like a lot of people who sat there and they said they hated the Sheik and all of a sudden now they love the Sheik because he's part of uh, the Alliance of Hope. Mm, not a big fan of that. You gotta love a person or hate a person. It doesn't matter what faction they're part of. Uh, that's who I am. SCW needs some new tag teams. They do. They absolutely hundred percent do. And I think one of the biggest problems is like I think they're capable of getting tag teams. Um, they just can't really find tag teams that are big enough to compete with Elite Pain because, like, I know obviously we saw the Super Bearded Brothers uh, about three or four months ago, smaller guys. Uh, the tag team that I saw Elite Pain take on last month uh, on the pay per view, smaller guys. Um, I don't see why they can't find like these bigger guys to take on, like the Hellbillies. So I saw them in DWA, you know, like, I, I, I think there'd be some good competition for uh, for SCW, but luckily. As I came to find out in the last round type, but we did. Uh, Sentinel is still commissioner of SCW, so we know that he's out there trying to find the best talent possible for SCW. Uh, so maybe he has some tag teams in the works to come in because the best thing to do is have blind faith in a leader. So um, I trust him. Uh, yes, tag teams can be exactly wrestle. I still hate the Sheik and Hardcore Impact can go with leaving. I would love Hardcore Impact. I'm uh, a huge fan of uh, of Brandon. I don't know if he goes by Brandon Tomselli, though, anymore. I really don't know. I haven't talked to him since the Elite Pro era, so I'm not sure what his name is now. But I do like Hardcore Impact. Don't know his tag team partner. Never met him. So, uh, Maybe SCW is cheap and don't want paid top tag teams. I don't think that's the case. I think I think what it is, if, if I had to give my, my opinion as... Um, as a journalist, we'll say because I was called I was called a journalist at one time by Sentinel. So I'll take the uh, I'll take the uh, the title for a moment. Hardcore Craig is that his name? Neeser plus Adam Cage equals Shatterproof. SCW new tag team. Neeser, so now you want tag team with the guy you wanted to fight next year? Come on, man. You can't. You can't do that. You, you can't. You can't tag with uh, Adam Cage. You can't do it. You just won't do it. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna avoid it, veto it. It's gonna say no. No. You could team with uh, Paulie Thomaselli. So wait, so who's the? Uh... Okay, so it was Vito, Sal, and Paulie. I guess so. I guess those are the Thomaselli brothers. Oh man. Okay. Well, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Brothers of Fun Destruction. What the hell is Brothers of Fun Destruction? I'm learning so much right now, and this is amazing. What is Brothers of Fun Destruction? Is that a real thing, or is that Nisa and uh, Rough and Yabo? Is that Rough Crossings? When you say Rough and Yabo, is that Rough Crossings? And I, was, I know Yabo is a clown, obviously. I didn't know they were a tag team. I know uh, Dally mentioned something about Yabo having a tag team partner. I just assumed there was another clown. I didn't know that would be Rough Crossing, so I think that'd be pretty cool. I know I know there was a series of uh, shows that Rough Crossing was doing for SCW. Uh, I want to say it was probably in 2019. It had to have been 2019. Um, I loved having them there. I'm a, I'm a huge uh, Western country guy. Um, so having a, having a wrestler who's kind of like a cowboy like that is pretty awesome. Uh, it was the same when I went to my... Uh, I think in 2017, it wasn't my first ep- uh, first show of SCW, but it might have been my second or my third. There was a, uh, a a wrestler coming out of the SCW school who, I don't know if you guys remember him. I do believe he still wrestles. Uh, Xavier Cross. Um, he had a dark match where he faced uh, uh, Doc Playlock. 
And uh, it was actually the same show that I won uh, Doc Blaylock's um, um, uh, trench coat, which I still have. It hangs up here uh, in the Freaknet Studios. So, um, let's hear. Brothers of Funstruction. Okay, so that's Yabo and Ruff. Okay, cool. See, thank you guys. Thank you guys for teaching me. I feel like I should know this stuff, but mm, I just don't. But at least you guys are here to kind of help me out with that. So, uh, anyways, so having those kind of uh, gimmicks and stuff are, are enjoyable to me, especially being down like Shabans, Clifton, stuff like that. I mean, like they are farm towns or country towns, and yet there's no farm or country uh, wrestlers anywhere. It's weird. Uh, let's see here. Anyways, uh, da, 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 da. what else you guys want to talk about before we dive into the rock and wrestling? Uh, any other tag teams you guys know of that you would love to see uh, in SCW? Uh, I know there was a, I know there's discussions about uh, Evil Gains and Evil. What about Shatterproof? Nisa, nee, if Shatterproof is you and Adam Cage, no. I will say no. First off, when somebody's rehabbing from an injury, I don't think they want the term shatter in their knee, in their name, <laughs> knee, uh, in their name. But no, Nisa, you cannot be a tag team with Adam Cage. You just can't do it. You guys were on my live stream last year talking about how you guys are going to set up a fight next year to, like, you know, to, to square off with each other. You can't change it. If you set it on the podcast, it can't be changed. It's stuck. It's, it's stuck, man. I'm sorry. That's why that's why when Hunter comes on, I still make fun of him, even though even though we kind of get along nowadays, I still gotta do it because I, I committed to it. I committed to the uh to to the whole thing. So yeah, no me, sir. There's no there's no shatter proof. And plus when you do shatter proof, you're ripping off bulletproof, man. And you can't do that either because they're gonna use that against you. That's stuff I learned when I went to wrestling school. You don't want you don't want to say something that somebody's gonna use against you unless that's the point of it. And usually that's like a heel thing. Like I think, like I think if you were heels and you're calling yourself shadowproof to kind of like to mimic what bulletproof was, I could kind of get that. But you don't want to be a baby face and call yourself shadowproof. It just it just wouldn't work. What it would be awesome, you know what? Neeser and Adam Cage is shadowproof would be awesome. Uh, nope, it won't. It just won't. I'll say it. I like Neeser. Neeser is a great guy. I just don't want him to, you know, do something he's going to regret. And that's teaming up with a guy that he threatened to beat up next year. Because I don't think Adam will forget about that. But we could talk that for a little bit while we're on the subject of uh, Bulletproof and everything. CM Punk. Uh, no CM Punk and Phil Brooks would be awesome. Oh man. Uh what do you guys think about BJ Price joining Bulletproof LLC? Uh I mean, is that something that's worth it? I mean, is it is that an upgrade from Adam Cage? Is it not? Uh I know talking on JFW, the price is wrong. Uh I know talking on uh JFW's uh episode recently, uh we were talking about how we would love to see uh Bulletproof get more uh star power into uh the company. Uh, and I gave the recommendation that I would actually like to see um, James Creed be part of Bulletproof LLC, just because I think Creed and Cage would actually make a pretty good tag team. Uh, even though they're both small guys again, which uh, especially in SCW, you don't, you don't really need it. But we did see uh, the modern day sharpshooters beat uh, Malibu's Most Wanted and Elite Payne at ARW's uh, show, the last one before this one. Uh, for the ARW Tag Team Championships. So anything is possible. It could happen. The who? I don't know. I, I said a lot of tag team names there, man. So really, you got to you gotta narrow it down. Are you talking about the Cajun Creed would be awesome together? See, I agree. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Sharpshooters. Yeah, the modern-day sharpshooters. You know, the uh, the James Creed and the Max Blaylock and how they were a tag team. And then Max Blaylock kind of went the way of the Genetti. And uh, now Creed is here. Who? So, Steve, uh, I didn't, I didn't catch it. Maybe you said it, but I missed it. What's your opinion on, uh, 
Which, okay, I was I support bulletproof. I was like, damn. So VJ Price in bulletproof is it a is it a plus or is it a negative? Steve, let me know. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, again. I'm assuming this is your is Miss HD. If this is Steve's daughter, you gotta tell me yes or no, right? I mean, just real quick so I know who I'm responding to because I don't want to be rude and assume you're somebody. Or just not type it all. Just just sit there in silence. I see how it is. Cool. Um. Yes, it is my kid. Thank you, Steve. Fact check Steve comes through again. Appreciate that, man. Okay, if not for VJ Price, who replaces him in uh, in uh, Bulletproof LLC? Who on the SCW roster would be good for Bulletproof if not for uh, VJ Price? I would love to get that information. Nisa, Amy, Steve, little female Steve. Uh, if I had to pick one, uh, hmm. Yeah, I think I just have to go Creed. I think Creed would have been good. I would love to see Creed as a heel. You know what? I would also like to see Evil Gangs and Evil maybe be part of that. It needs to be a big group. I think I think Independence is kind of missing that whole like group faction thing. Kind of like the family. I know there's more than just Ivan and Charlie um, and the one guy that comes out with them from time to time. I, 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 I think his name is Tiny. I don't know. Um, but I know there's more of them. Creed as a heel would be great. Creed as a heel would be absolutely great. And I think it would also help him with like his, uh, nothing against him about it, but like kind of like his promos and stuff like that too. Cause I think his promos are a little, uh, they're, they're like one way or another. They're either very soft spoken or, uh, they're way too over the top. Uh, but I think like as a heel, I think you kind of get, you get better at talking. That's just my, personal opinion uh i think as a heel you have it's a lot easier to kind of throw out a promo and talk in a promo and stuff like that because it's a lot easier to say something for people to hate you than say something hoping that gets you over uh, especially the fact that uh you have james cree rolling into the ring and pointing a fake gun at somebody uh not really a baby face thing i mean yes the uh uh motor city machine guns did something like that or whatever uh Bullet Club does something like that, but Bullet Club's supposed to be a heel faction. People just love them just because they did the same thing with the NWO. Uh, no, Tiny is not family. That's OSM. He's with them at ARW. Tiny has never been from some little fed up north. Okay, it, Tiny's the really tall dude that comes to the ring with the guy who wears the leather vest wrestling, right? That's who I'm thinking of, right? That's the, that guy's name is Tiny, correct? Yes. Okay. So then, who is the 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 heavy set dude with the chains around his neck? Like, I think I see him more at ARW than I've seen him at SCW. OSM. Okay. Thank you. What does OSM stand for? Like, I don't think I've ever heard people introduce him before. I don't think I've ever seen him. Before. Old school Manson. Okay. Cool. So we got old school Manson. There's Charlie Junior. There's Ivan. I think they just kicked out that rancid kid, right? Like they just like they beat him up at the last AOW show. Again, I wish I went to that one too. Um, Snake, yeah. See, I, I I need to talk to Ivan again. I miss talking to Ivan. I think that was a great conversation. I, I think that was probably one of my favorite roundtables is when I had uh, uh, Hunter, Ivan, and I think it was Austin Roberts all on at the same time, uh, kind of just talking. Travis, when do you wanna? Travis, when do you want an A class we can teach you? An A class? Steve, I'm dumb, man. I don't know what you were trying to say there. When do you want an A class? Oh, about indie wrestling. Oh, dude, I, I, I want to be educated. I have never, I've never once said an indie history class. Yeah, I've never once said that I am a, uh, a, uh, I can't even think of the word. You can, clearly you can tell how stupid I am. Um, I never once said that I know anything about independent wrestling. I just know what I have seen in my life, and it's very, very minimal. Uh, some parts of Lunatic Wrestling Federation back in the 90s, a little bit of elite pro wrestling in like the early 2000s, and of course, SCW now. Uh, so all this in all this history for independent wrestling, I do not know anything about it. And I've never I've never said I have. If I if I did, then clearly I lied. 
but those are that's I mean those are one of the biggest reasons like why I want to do like interviews with independent wrestlers. And it's not so much talking about their history because when you sit there, oh no, technically I'm like it is about their history, but not like asking about certain points in their history, like more like just them kind of telling stories. Because talking to someone like Hunter Payne or uh, Austin Roberts, Ivan Manson, uh, even Acid uh, from LWF, uh, Elite Pro Wrestling, stuff like that. It's not like you can just Google them and pull up like a Wikipedia or a biography about them because they're just not out there. Um, I've actually tried when I was uh, Terry Allen. Yes, I would love to. I want to talk to Terry Allen on what he thinks uh, or why he thinks it's a good time to try to be president of SCW. Because I really don't know who's running SCW because I've heard a lot of like Terry Allen wants to, you know, be the president or he wants to run it, but he still got Sentinel who's the commissioner, but you got John Hurt who's the acting president. Um, and then you got me who just wants to do it just because why the hell not? If everyone else could do it, why not me? Uh, I mean, Daddy E stealing half the shit I say on this show. I mean, clearly what I say works. Uh, even though Daddy E apparently is, uh, there's rumors that Daddy E selling, which is kind of goofy. Uh, I think I just read some before we started here, like two to four billion dollars to NBC. But anyways, we're not here to talk about Daddy E. Um, when I was trying to set up the Hunter Payne episode to sit and actually talk with him, like, and and when I do these, I want to do them as like legit shoot. Uh, Interviews, not talking about Hunter Payne, but the guy behind Hunter Payne. Um, you know, so you, you, I can sit there and I can Google Hunter Payne, I can Google Balthazar, I can Google whatever g- gimmick he used back in the day, uh, Windy City and all that stuff. I could sit there and Google it, but nothing comes up except for maybe some videos of some matches. So it doesn't help me. Uh, I did buy the uh, History of the Lunatic Wrestling Federation book. So I do own that. So that kind of helps with... Um, with a little bit of like knowledge from the LWF aspect of it, but outside of uh, Acid and Braun the Lumberjack, I don't really know anyone who currently still wrestles or is involved in wrestling around here that was in that company. I do remember other guys. I just don't remember. Uh, see, I mean, my cousin's in that book, which is awesome to actually read uh, stories about your own family member inside a book that you can purchase. So it is pretty cool to kind of hear about that. Um, I mean, like, I know wrestlers like, you know, Supreme. I met him, uh, Jay Jensen, uh, God, Maverick. There was a uh, Charcoal, big fucking dude, needs to bring in Billy Wack. I, <clears throat> I don't understand. And again, this is me because when I heard of Billy Wack, I was six, seven years old. I don't know why Billy Wack, Billy Wack is such a big deal. Like, can somebody explain that to me? And if that sounds ignorant, I apologize. But what what is it about Billy Wack that everyone seems to love Billy Wack? Because I remember seeing him. Obviously, he was president or owner of LWF. Uh, when my cousin opened up Elite Pro, uh, he had Billy Wack there for a brief period. Uh, I think doing ring announcing, maybe commentating. Uh, primetime wrestling when they had their one and only episode or one one and only show in Piatone, Billy Wack was there in the audience. So I've seen this guy around, but outside of knowing he ran an indie company in Illinois for uh, for some years, I don't understand why Billy Wack is so big. So if any of you could explain to me why, I'd appreciate that. Um, and also, Steve, since you brought up, why would Billy Wack be good for SCW? compared to, I don't know, the other three people who are claiming uh, leadership of SCW. Like, do they just need a fourth? Because if they need a fourth, I'll do it. He can cut a great Evan promo. He has great mind in wrestling. Okay. Other than seeing him do interviews, I don't know much about the guy. I've actually never talked to him. Um, even in Elite Pro, I never really had like, a conversation with him. Thomas Sully Brothers I talked to. Sin I talked to. Uh, obviously, Acid. Uh, some of the guys from the wrestling school I was with who kind of came up. Uh, I think one of them is actually, uh, he's been one of the guys I went to wrestling school with. Uh, I don't know his real name, but they called him Nubby. He was, uh, he was a smaller guy. I think he referees for uh, another independent company around here. 
30 minutes in, and where are all the SCW stars? I know, right? I know this is boring to you guys, and I apologize. I wish there were more guys from SCW who are willing to come in here and actually talk. So uh, if no one else is going to call in, uh, I will be the first. Nisa, you, I'll tell you what. You could call in, but it has to be about wrestling. Do not talk about your personal life because this is all about wrestling. I want to stay on this groove. Deal. Perfect. All right. Uh, give me about five minutes to get my thought out. Uh, give me two minutes to remember what I was trying to think about. And then give me five minutes to get that thought out. And then you can call in. Um, what the hell were we talking about? Elite Pro. Oh, so yeah. So you said Turtle. Yeah, I want to say his last. I, uh, yeah, I know he's been to SCW shows. Turtle sounds like that might be the guy. Nubby is turtle now. Thank you. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I know I've seen him at SCW shows. I, I never went up and talked to him because God for God knows if he even knows me. And God knows if he even likes me. I don't know how people felt about me at uh, Elite Pro because um, everyone knew that I was related to Mike. But um, I don't think – everyone knew I was related to Mike, but I don't think they really uh, – <clears throat> um, I don't know. How, how the fuck do I word that properly? They knew I was related to Mike, so I think that's kind of like what kind of pushed everyone away from me. There was one dude, uh, Chad. Um, he was in wrestling school. He he was at the school with me. He's really fucking one of the coolest guys. Uh, Chad Norris, Chad Norris Jr. or something like that. Fuck no, they don't like you. I love one. <laughs> I know Steve. You do. I said, but I like. I I don't. I don't like being hated. I like being liked, man. I like when people like me. Except, you know, except when I say shit to stupid shit. Like Sentinel, I don't care if Sentinel likes me or not. But I need to be liked. That's how I get viewers and downloads and people following my stuff is by being liked. If people are like, oh, I don't want to follow that guy, fuck him. Then I don't then I don't get the followers and the viewers and I don't get the sponsorships and I have to continue to work a shitty job. And I really, really don't want to work a shitty job anymore. Which, by the way, uh, since I brought up not wanting to work anymore, uh, I just want to let you guys know that this live stream is brought to you by BallWash.com. If you had a chance to check it out, go to BallWash.com and check out all the amazing products they have. There's just like uh, things like shampoos, conditioners, body washes. They have a line of boxers, hand sanitizers. Uh, God. Personal lubricants, too. They have everything. They literally uh, just decide, like, you know what? What do we need that's hygienic? All this stuff. And what else? Lube. Yeah, literally, that's how it happened. Go to ballwash.com. Check out uh, ball, <laughs> ball wash, wash your penny balls. Nice, Steve. Nice, Steve. Um, I follow who people I don't like. Oh, Steve, you're my favorite. <laughs> go to ballwash.com check out all their amazing products and uh when you go to check out go ahead and use the promo code freaknet that's f-r-e-a-k-n-e-t uh you'll save 15 percent on your entire order uh we're also brought to you by audible.com so if you guys are a huge if you guys are a huge fan of stories and you're just not a big fan of reading them yourselves or you prefer to listen to a story while you're driving wherever you need to go uh go to audibletrial.com slash freaknet that's f-r-e-a-k-n-e-t uh set uh set up uh your 30-day free trial and along with that free trial you get credit to your first book purchase that's right so you get a book and a trial for 30 days absolutely free cancel at any time um best part about sponsorships is i actually have another one coming my way uh i actually got uh amazon music reached out to uh the network and asked us if we'd be interested in being sponsored by them so we're getting that set up so i may have uh an Amazon sponsor coming up here shortly. So I don't know how it works out. It's a little bit different than Audible. <clears throat> um, I don't, yeah, as I said, I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but I set up the forms, turn in the paperwork. Hopefully I'm going to hear back from them in a couple of days and I kind of get figured out how that works. I think it's really just like a, like if you sign up for Amazon Music, kind of like Audible, maybe, but it seems like there's something a little bit different. So I'll get that figured out. And as soon as I do, I can let you guys know. But yeah, we are being sponsored by Amazon Music soon. So that makes me feel better about, you know, the growth and everything. Not, not, I'm not talking about like, you know, the non growth like this live stream has, uh, since I'm sitting here committing two hours to a company where not one of their wrestlers could participate in this. That does kind of bother me. So thank you to Steve for bringing up the fact that we're like 40 minutes in now and there's not one SCW star in here. That is kind of upsetting. Granted, yes, I'm doing this at seven o'clock PM instead of seven o'clock AM, but it's a fucking Friday. I don't care that's nice outside. I'm committing time to do SCW. That's okay. 
Uh, where are your co-hosts? Good question, Steve. Uh, let me tell you where they're at. Uh, Dizzle J is actually at work. Uh, he works nights uh, through the week. Dally was going to let me know yesterday if she was going to be here or not. Um, so there's that. Uh, maybe she got busy. Maybe she got caught up with something. I don't know. Um, but the thing is, I went ahead and I committed to this time and send this up before I found out they're even free to do it. So, um, not that big of a deal. Uh, I know that they can be here when they're able to. I believe they're going to be at the SCW show tomorrow. Um, but uh, you accept the application, Steve? Do you wanna do you wanna be a co-host on uh, JFW podcast? Because uh, I'm telling you right now, man, I, I wouldn't say no to it. Uh, and I've, I've welcomed you onto this. Uh, I do a JFW podcast with you sometimes. See, yeah, Steve. I mean. I would love to sit down and talk to you, man. I was actually trying to figure out the best way to uh, get more involved in, because uh, you talked about this, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, we don't talk a lot about it. And actually, honestly, we barely ever talk about it on uh, the podcast. I think we talked about it once, and that was back when Omega faced Jericho uh, for the uh, Intercontinental Championship or something like that. So, um. I was talking to the I was talking to Dally and Dizzle over the weekend about getting back into the swing of things, making this a consistent weekly podcast again, and figuring out the best way to do that, and also trying to build the content up for the podcast. Um, and so, uh, trying to figure all that out and how to get that figured out as far as getting the content out to you guys. Uh, I have no idea what the hell I just said, but that sounded confusing as fuck. Um, anyways, let me kind of get my mind back in the right track here. So I know I talk a lot about independent wrestling, which I love to do. And I know I like to talk about the televised worldwide wrestling, which I love to do. So I'm probably going to try to split that stuff off. And that way I could do shows solely on televised world wrestling. And then I could do shows solely on independent local wrestling. That way, when I get somebody from, let's say, India or the UK listening to my show, because I do get downloads from all over the world, it is a true thing, um, I can see the time frames on how long people watch uh, our shows, and um, it cuts off right around the time I talk about the indie stuff, just because, not not for everyone, but like the time, you can see the times go down, uh, right around the indie stuff, because people over in India, Uganda, the Philippines, Australia, they don't know anything about the local independent wrestling, so they don't listen to it. So I think I'm going to try to split it off. I really want to try to focus on doing these SCW roundtables on a monthly basis, kind of like a, a next day recap of the previous show. Uh, but I also want to kind of uh, factor in other local wrestling companies too. Uh, one of the big ones, and I know this is an SCW roundtable, but hey, guess what? If uh, SCW doesn't want to show up to it, then I can kind of talk about whatever I want, right? Can you guys agree with that? Can I mean, do you guys agree with me on that for a minute? If SCW isn't here, then I can kind of talk about more than just SCW. Is, is that okay with you guys? Yes. Thank you, Neeser. Um, Where is SCW? I wish I knew. I posted the link to this live stream three times, and I tagged SCW into them twice, maybe three times. I don't know. Um, Nisa wants to call in, invite them as a speaker. Yeah, uh, Nisa, give me one second, man. So, uh, about local independent wrestling, if you guys don't know, if you haven't had a chance to uh listen to my last episode, uh, one of the uh, wrestling company, another independent wrestling company that works with us a lot, like, I mean, like beyond anything I could have imagined, is Phoenix Pro Wrestling out of Wisconsin. Um, Adam Cage was actually supposed to be at their next show, which I actually believe is uh, next weekend uh, is uh, their show. And um, they send us, uh, they send us like giveaway stuff, like bracelets and koozies and pens and stickers and stuff like that. They actually sent me um, this awesome looking hard hat that has their uh, logo on it that I love. I've actually had on a couple of the video uh, podcasts that we released. Uh, but what they also did, uh, 
I know he won't know. Uh, well, also, one of the things they did is they actually sent us uh, tickets to their wrestling show next week. And uh, we were, were uh, working on doing some giveaways and stuff like that. Uh, Steve actually knows more about this because he was on the live stream when uh, me and Dally were talking about it. And we actually do have some of the tickets left. So, uh, uh, you guys, uh, I'm going to offer them to you. If, uh, if any of you guys uh, have any interest in checking out a wrestling show up in Wisconsin uh, next week, I do have some tickets available. Let me know, and I will get those sent over to you as soon as possible. It's my special gift to you guys for participating here in the live stream and helping us out. Um, I would, but I'm working. I understand, Steve. I want to get out to that show, too. It's just, unfortunately, I'm also working that weekend. Um, I hate the fact ARW uh, is next weekend too. SW showed up last show. Oh yeah, ARW is next weekend too. Crap. See, that's why I don't like working every other weekend because I miss these wrestling shows. And I know ARW is getting ready to start their tournaments uh, for new champions. So, Nisa, if you want, I'm ready for you. To, I'm ready to take your call. Um, but yeah, if you guys want the PPW tickets, you'll know, let me know. Or if you know anybody who's up in Wisconsin who is a wrestling fan. I do have tickets available for them. I can send them out as a uh, special gift to you from you guys. And, uh, yeah, that way we could uh, kind of help promote uh, independent wrestling, not only here in Illinois, but also in Wisconsin and in Indiana. So um, I'm excited to see who ARW has in their brackets as far as their championships go. And I'd love to see kind of like who ends up. Because if I remember correctly, the last uh, three Three out of four of their titles, I think uh, those wrestlers don't even wrestle for AW anymore, if I remember correctly. Because I may, I think if I last know, like, all hail Caesar has joined. <laughs> uh, sh- uh, he probably woke up from his nap. God, I feel bad now. Um, because, like, what? So, ARW, real quick. Uh, so, the women's champion was Melanie, who's in AEW now. Uh, Machine, I think, was a heavyweight champion. He retired. Um, the modern day sharpshooters were the tag team champions, and they're not together anymore. And that just leaves the Indiana State champion, which I don't know who the last one was, but um, it's kind of weird. So, like, even if they weren't doing this tournament, they would have to get new champions for those titles, anyways. So, I'm excited to see who from SCW is in those brackets and uh who comes back from arw after this whole pandemic thing and get involved in it and uh see once and for all who is the uh new champion of uh, arw who knows maybe jph will become arw champion he could be uh uh harris two belts so nisa are you calling in man or uh you just too excited that hunter showed up because uh i'm a little i'm a little bothered you haven't called yet since i said it was okay that's kind of the ego in me and who would want to be a champ of Indiana? Come on, Indiana's not that bad, man. It's like Illinois, but without the corruption and the uh, taxes. It's pretty much the same thing. Oh, uh, nee, sir. Let's see here. We sent your invite. Oh, what the hell's going on? It's going to be said. There he is. Nee, sir, you there? Skip it to ba 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 do da ba. Hey there, Travis T. How's it going, man? Did you just did you just fucking scat at me, bro? Skip it, do ba 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 ba. I feel good, baby. I'm good. I'm happy for you, man. Um, were you at the SCW show last month? Oh, you you bet your you bet your trucker Travis T. Hat I was. Yeah. Tell me, uh, tell me about your uh, tell me about uh, how you felt about the bulletproof incident. Well, I, well, I was actually kind of shocked. I, I. I thought me and Adam Cage were going to duke it out with Bulletproof behind his back and the Patriots of Hope behind my back. But nope, that that plan, right out of the window. Yeah. So why are you friends with Adam Cage now, man? What changed? Well, well, it started with a beer post about, I don't know what kind of Budweiser post it was, but I'm like, and then suddenly I'm like, don't worry, pal. I might see what I can do with the beers. Besides, <laughs> besides, we're Chicago Blackhawks fans. Why? He's a Blackhawks fan. I'm a Blackhawks fan. Enough said. You guys, so you guys don't want to root for a good hockey team? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nisa. So, so, okay, I know, so I know I make no sense at the time. Well, no, it's fine, man. I honestly, dude, I I host a show and I don't make sense half the time, so it's not a big yeah. deal. <laughs> um, all right, so obviously we saw uh, Adam Cage get kicked out of Bulletproof LLC. Uh, we see that he's injured, recovering, hopefully to be back uh, maybe towards the end of the year. Send I don't know. 
Sorry. What's up? Go on. S sending you prayers, Adam Cage. Hope you feel oh, better soon, my man. Oh, that's nice of you, Neeser. But just like Adam, Adam Cage, just like all the other SCW stars, he's not here. I it's know. Just us, man. I know. It's just us. It's just us. So let me talk to you a little bit about um, about SCW. Give me your thoughts on Terry Allen wanting to be president, uh, John Hurt being acting president, and uh, Sentinel still being a current commissioner. Ooh. Give me your feedback. Uh, give me your feedback on how this whole like triangle of power is uh, is going on in SCW. And give me your feedback on that because I know you're you, you're a Sentinel guy. Don't well, know why. Well, you're a Sentinel guy. Well, this power triumvirate is, and by tri triumvirate, I mean a three-way power. It is kind of, it is kind of shifting the balance as we speak. But Terry Allen, whew, I don't want to mess with him. He he told me, he told me, be nice to Grandma. Don't earn my dark side. And this was on the May May the Fourth be with you day, the Star Wars day. Mm -hmm. um, John Hurt, I have, I have no idea what he's going to bring, and. The, and as far as my buddy to send, no, I have to be good because he has he has eyes everywhere. He know he know he knows my weaknesses. Believe me. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned that John Hurt. You don't know what he's gonna bring. I'll tell you what he won't bring, and that is an Iron Press shirt. That thing is wrinkly, more wrinkly than uh, Hunter Payne's uh, forehead there. So, um, so John Hurt is a current acting president, uh, and he was he at the last show. No, uh, Terry Allen nope. took over the show last month. No, nope. Terry Allen was there announcing the match. No, no, he he made the match between Julia Angel and Natasha Crane and Paloma Star. That's right. You're 100 percent correct. You know what I love is the fact that um, I know it's been mentioned on the uh, the podcast uh, several times, actually within the last uh, couple months. Is that uh, that the the SCW Women's Division was kind of a uh, uh, miss miss in town? Like it, it was very small. I know, but right? Then, I know. And then also, uh, one show, they they get two new uh, wrestlers. Now, obviously, I know uh, Angel has been there before. I think she was there the month previous. Uh, but a new a new star showed up on the last episode. Yeah. Uh, so it's awesome how like also it has to be word of mouth. You know, it's like. Like SCW is a place to to go, is a place to wrestle, especially uh, in the Midwest, uh, in the Midwest area in Illinois and all that. So now we're seeing more wrestlers uh, coming into the division, which also means now there's more competition for your little girlfriend, uh, Plum. Uh, hey, 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 hey! Watch it! I'm an engagement yeah. now. I don't care. I'm gonna say it. Listen, man. Listen, man. I, if you get in trouble, I'm still gonna sleep like a baby tonight. It doesn't I, matter. I know. And and Paloma is happy I'm engaged. And 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 believe me, I was gonna be in Paloma's corner, but but mm -hmm. boss man Hunter had to step in, saying, "Ryan, I respect your friendship with Paloma, but but what if but what if your shenanigans with Aaron Xavier against him cost Paloma the match?" If you know what I'm trying to say, if she goes, if Angel fi fights Paloma Star for for the women's title, and I might accidentally cost Paloma the match, because yeah. you know you know me, I'm like a Roman candle, bang, 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 all over the place. Yeah, no, and, and you know Hunter makes a good point about that because you know usually when you sit there, you see a manager out there, uh, you know, trying to work with. You've seen a lot with Bulletproof LLC. You've seen a lot of times where Keith, you know, tries to interfere, and then once in a while, accidentally slips up and costs Bulletproof the match. So it does tend to happen. So that's a smart thing, uh, and plus it's a lot easier. Like unless you're already set up and booked to do that stuff, being there as a fan is probably a lot better because now you get to sit there and you get to focus on watching the entire match rather than just making sure one particular person is good. So yeah, um, yeah. So I've seen the talent in the tag team. I'm very happy for SCW to kind of grow their women division. Uh, I do see that uh, at uh, tomorrow's show at uh, Steam Hollow. Uh, who, who's uh, who's who's that? Who's the uh, triple threat uh, tomorrow? That's going to be uh, Natasha, Natasha Queen, Queen Angel. Julia, and Angel. And I agree with Amy. Managers that can't manage. You're right. I'm not able to manage because. Well, Amy, I don't know if you're agreeing with my statement, but I do agree with what you're saying. Manage, jurors can manage, and I'm and believe me, I won't be able to manage because, well, if I pull shenanigans like always, yeah. Well, maybe you don't have to be a manager. Maybe you can be more of a valet. All right, we'll see, see about that. Right. All you gotta do is just stand there, and not do anything. And how hard would that be, man? 
All right, guys, this is where we're going to cut the uh, first part of the live stream off. Uh, so, um, hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. It's always a fun time talking about Nice here. Uh, so, tune in for the next episode of uh, part two of the live stream for this SCW Roundtable for the SCW Rock and Wrestling show that happened last week. Uh, we do appreciate you guys taking the time out to listen to our episodes, which you catch on all podcast live, uh, podcast streaming apps. All you got to do is search JFW Podcast or Just Freak Wrestling. And, of course, find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's all I got, guys. As always, I am Travis T, and thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW Podcast.